We're gonna have a small class because I turned it off and then it was back on. And I know there's a lot of craze going on right now, but we are gonna enjoy this time. It doesn't matter how many people show up, we're here and that's what matters, right? Yes. I'm gonna switch us over. All right, you guys can go ahead and lay back Get nice and comfy and then we'll get started and if you don't like your spot that you're in feel free to move around adjust in any way at any time I'm super glad that the rain held off and allowed us this time to get together I know many of us need it very very much today I am one of those. I've been kind of nervous, anxious. And when we come to these classes, it just helps me to let that go. So, um, first of all, before we get too deep into the practice, tonight is all about clearing our minds. So we're gonna really just focus on whatever it is clear in your life. You can think water, you can think diamonds you can think anything but just think of the clear color and then um, I want you all to just think about this too I my mom is here and she knows I'm super super afraid of dark water so anything wa water I can't see through that's like murky or dark I have a big fear and it's not necessarily from what's underneath it but it's more of not being able to see through it to like save somebody's life like if they're under there and you can't see them you can't save them and that's my biggest fear of dark water so with that being said our minds can just be like that as well very cluttered very discolored full of noise so that's what tonight is about so go ahead and begin your breath work and we'll start with a few words here. The more we practice settling our minds, the easier it will become over time. After a full day of stories, words, images, songs, and a number of other sources that play over and over in our heads for hours, we even lie in bed at night in the dark and it continues. This can leave us feeling unsettled, it also makes it difficult to take in any new information or inspiration. So like a cluttered house that needs to be cleared if it's going to have room for movement and new life, our mind needs clearing if they are to be open to new information, ideas, and inspiration. Too often, the activities we choose to help us relax only add clutter like watching television, seeing a movie, reading a book, or talking to friends, these all involve in taking more information. In order to really clear our minds, we need a break from all mental stimulation. So activities like yoga, dancing, or taking a walk, long walk to help you draw your attention to your body and slow the mental activity enough that your mind starts to settle. Deep breathing is an even simpler way to draw the attention away from our mental activities. Once we are mentally relaxed, we can begin the process of clearing our minds. And most of us instinctively know that what allows our minds to relax and release any unnecessary clutter. It may be meditation or time spent staring at the stars. Whatever it is, these exercises feel like a cool cleansing bath for the brain and leave our minds feeling clear and open. Setting aside time to clear our minds once a day creates a ritual that becomes second nature over time. Our minds will begin to settle with less effort the more we practice. And ultimately, the practice of clearing our minds allows us to be increasingly more open so that we can perceive the world as fresh offering as it truly is free of yesterday's mental clutter. So with that, we'll just begin our cleansing breath here if you haven't already. 
So take in as much air as you possibly can. Take it all the way to the top. Take a slight pause, maybe even take in one more little bit of breath. And then exhale, empty your lungs completely out. Let go of anything that's old and stagnant, just leaving only room for brand new breath to enter in. So repeating that cycle through today's practice, our cleansing, clearing breath, it's gonna help us to settle our mind, relax our body, restore peace. On the next exhale, I want you guys to slowly just start to sit up, no rushing whatsoever. We're gonna meet at the top of our mat in an easy seated posture. And we'll just take our shoulders up, back and down. Just let them relax away from the ears. Just let your hands land where they wanna land. No mudras or anything like that. Just let it settle and close your eyes reincorporate the breath let's not let that go for the whole practice today and as you breathe deep on every exhale see if you can let your body relax a little bit more unclench your muscles and let's go ahead and open our eyes good job y'all we're just gonna reach over come over to the forearm and then once you get there, just take your arm all the way over. Big stretch. If the knee comes up, it's totally fine. This is to stretch your ribs. Maybe circle the um, wrist a couple of times one direction and then out the other way. And we'll slowly make our way back to center. Do it on the same side. Nice slow movements to just get us started here. Reach over as far as you can. Circle the wrist. I know Jessica does a lot of work with her hands. This has to feel good to move. And let's take it back center. Good job, guys. We're actually just gonna come all the way back. Let your feet stay at the top of the mat, staff pose. And we're gonna take our hands, point them right in towards your tailbone. And sit up nice and tall, chest is proud. And then just bend the elbows. Maybe move from side to side. See where you get the most out of the stretch. And if it feels okay, let your head drop all the way out. So elbows are bent, maybe moving side to side. And then go ahead, keep your head there, but straighten your arms, stretch your biceps, and then lower down one more time. Maybe move side to side if that feels good. And then we're gonna take the gaze forward and straighten the arms, go ahead, push your heels into the mat, point your toes, reverse plank here. So we're gonna lift our tailbone off the mat and then let the head drop out or keep it in alignment with the spine. You can choose, squeeze and lift the, the glutes. Hold and breathe. Big breaths in and out. And let's slowly let the hips release down to the ground. We'll take a big breath in, reach up and then fold it forward. Breath out. When you get to your max, go ahead. Then you can round your back, it's okay. But we're really trying to get our head as close as we can to our toes. It's not about how low you can get, it's really about how long you can create your spine. So if you can make connection to the legs or feet in any way, I want you to take a hold of something, calves, ankles, feet, clothes, whatever you can, and just begin to bend your elbows. Getting a little bit closer, we're just gently encouraging our body to get a little bit more. And let's take this into a little bit of a different stretch. Pull your back away, try to make a C with your back. Your heels may even lift off. Oh, that feels so good. Maybe take it to the side. Who likes the side better than the middle? I love the side. It gets all along the side of my spine. That's where I hold a lot of tightness and tension. Let's switch over to the other side and pull away. 
Excellent work, guys. Come back, center. We'll let go and we'll rise up. Good job. So we're gonna take our arm right across, lift it up. And once you get it there, you'll feel an intense stretch already start. So try to encourage it across the body. Get a little bit further over. And if you can, then let's open the chest, lift up tall. much longer. <laughs> Go ahead, pass that leg over and drop it down. We're very, very lucky to have this weather in July. Lift up and across. I guess we'll take a few mosquitoes if we can get cooler weather, won't we? Make sure your back is tall, your head is reaching up for the sky. Take that leg across your body as much as you can and we'll pass it over and set it down nice and gently. Let's take our legs back and around behind us. All fours here. I don't feel like it's a class without cat and cow, so let's move through a few rounds. You can go on your own or with me, either way. So your hands, your wrists are right under the shoulders, knees under the hips, and a straight line of energy, tailbone to the crown of your head. Take a breath in and look up at the sky. Let your hips lift as well. Your belly drops out, your shoulders away from the ears. Then exhale everything out. Round your back like a cat. Look at your belly button. Really tall through the spine. And then we'll move through that a couple of times on our own breath. Eyes open or closed. Exhale around the back. See if you can take your breaths a little bit deeper than you normally do. <coughs> a little bit of a challenge. Last one. We're all going to be back in neutral spine. And I want you guys to just shift this back into an active child's pose. So toes are still active right behind you. Elbows are still lifted off the mat, but see if you can get your forehead to touch the mat. Now see if you can encourage your hips a little bit further back and your chest a little bit closer to the mat. Now we're gonna come into downward facing, but I wanna walk you through it. Spread your fingers out really wide. Suck your belly button into your spine, and then use your core strength to lift your hips up to the sky for your first downward facing dog here. So let's get acclimated to just being upside down here for a second. Feel free to bend your knees, come up on the tippy toes, make any adjustments you need. It's a perfect time to see all the little buggies that are flying around. <laughs> they are nice and active. All right, guys. So from here, let's lift one leg. I'm going to lift my right, your left, up to the sky. Straight leg, single leg dog. Now see if you can bend your knee and flex your foot. This is going to open the hip. Now get that base heel close to the mat. Good. From here, maybe circle your hip a few times. Just moving, circling, and then repeating the other way. And then on that third one or so, lift back in and extend your toes back up to the sky and gently set it down. Let's take about three cycles of breath here before we move on. Take breaks as needed. Breath in, exhale, settle. Breath in, exhale, settle. Last breath here, we'll all meet together. And let's lift the other leg up to the sky. Go ahead, bend the knee, flex the foot. And when you're ready, just circle in one direction. And we'll go back the other way, clearing that space 
out and keep it bent and flexed. Straighten the toes up to the sky and set it down. Let's walk our hands and feet together, forward fold. Let's just hang here. Top body is heavy. Take a cleansing, clearing breath and get your top body close to the legs. One of our most nurturing postures. So when you're having anxiety or you're having some fear, this is a great one. It's very nurturing. You can even grab a hold of the backs of the legs, pull yourself a little closer. Excellent. Let's plant our hands into the ground. Let your hips go down for monkey pose. Good. Just push those heels down into the mat. Get a nice calf stretch. Any runners? I know Virginia runs. She runs lots. How many miles a week? Because I know in a day is what I ran, run like in a week. <laughs> like she did 11 the other day and I was like, oh, I do like nine a week. If I'm lucky. <laughs> What's the most in a week? A lot. So much. Yes, she looks amazing. And so these stretches really help. I know they help her. They help with everybody. No matter what your workout of choice is, it gives you more mobility. All right, so we're going to step this back into a low lunge. You can pick which side. We're going to work on the hips. So we're going to finish out some stretching here. Then we're going to flow, and I'm going to hand it over to Alyssa after that. She's up here teaching with me today. Drop the knee. Drop the toe. She just got done with teacher training, what, a couple, couple weeks ago, maybe a month? Yeah. So, But she's been practicing for a long, long time. She's excited to get started, get some practice going. And I thought this would be a great opportunity. Let's open the hip. Really press the hips forward. Ooh, that feels good. Take it back to center. Go ahead, activate the toe and knee in the back. And let's see if we can come up to the thigh. Readjust in any way. We're going to reach it out. Excellent. Hold and breathe. If you need to, just come back, readjust, and arms up. Let's see if we can touch the back knee down. Little lunges here, so just inhale, touch it down. Exhale, lift it up. So all the weight is coming through that front heel. Good job. Excellent flexibility and strength all at one time. It definitely challenges us. We got one more after this. Whoop. And we'll hold here at the top. Excellent. Just windmill those arms down. Frame the foot. And we're going to step it back into plank. And we're going to move through our vinyasa flow. So you can come onto your knees or stay up. And lower yourself halfway. Push into your upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale it. Downward facing dog. Three cycles of breath here. If you created some heat, and your heart is beating a little faster. You can open your mouth and exhale out. Last breath here. Look between the hands. Let's step or hop to the front. Take your half lift. Inhale. And then exhale it out forward fold. Let's reach those arms out and up. Reverse swan dive. Come through the heart center. Excellent work. Let's let that go. Shake it off. We're going to do that other side from the monkey pose. So any way that you'd like to find your way down there, you can flow through it or you can just come down. I'm just coming straight down. I'm going to settle in here. How's everybody feeling? Good. Push those heels down. Take a few cleansing breaths. And when you're ready, step that other leg to the back for the other side. 
So let gravity work here just a little bit before you drop it all the way. Really kind of pressing those hips to the front. I feel like I hear a squirrel. <laughs> I feel like he's on top of us. <laughs> That's okay. He's probably doing some yoga too. Drop the knee and toe down. It's like all of the animals are really active right now. I like it. So go ahead, relax the toe in the back. Hips are tracking towards the front of the mat. There. Now let's open the hip here. If you want, if you want a little bit more like mobility, sometimes I like do a little cir a little mini circle and then you can take it back the other way. So our hips get a lot of front to back. Motion side to side. Rarely do we move like this. Very, very rare. So it's good to just move your body side to side. Excellent. Take it back center. Activate the toe and knee. And then if you'd like to, come up to the thigh or you can stay down and just stretch. This is our strengthening moves here. Ooh, that feels good. Let's reach it forward. So try to keep the chest off the leg. Don't rest too much. And then if it is too much, go ahead, let your body relax into the leg. Good. So from here, let's let those arms down. Good. We'll take a little break, reset. Let's come back up. And this time, arms extend. And we're going to drop down, breath in, knee touches. Inhale. Exhale it up. Try to get about four more rounds with your own breath. Try to slow it way down. Challenge yourself. Suck the belly button in. Everything's shaking. That's a good thing. The benefits of yoga in the physical realm right here. And we'll settle it down. Arms touch the ground. Take it into plank asana and move through your flow, modified or not. We'll meet in upward facing dog or cobra and exhale it back into our downward facing. Good. Stay here for just a few more breaths. We'll look between the hands and step or hop to the front. Half lift. Exhale it out, forward fold. And reverse swan dive out and up. Come through the heart. Excellent work. Shake that off. Let's take a drink if you need one. If not, just hang out there and just stand in your mountain pose. Ooh. I know. And they're worse, I think, closer to the trees. You're going to spray again, just. Oh, that's the best. It's a good stuff, girl. I think in mine, I have the one we did on the retreat if you want it. That was peppermint, frankincense, and stress away, I think. All right. Now that we've kind of taken that little reset, I'm going to flip the camera up. So we're going to flow, move through a fun little flow really quickly, and then I'm going to pass it over. Alyssa's going to take us through some balance work. And um, we'll just have some fun with our practice. No judgment, okay? That's what I want y'all to always work on, is we never judge anyone around us or ourselves. That's usually the person we're hardest on. Um, and so I want you to let all that judgment go. You're here and that's what matters. So take your shoulders up, back and down. Relax, settle in. Maybe close your eyes for about two to three breaths. Set your intention of a clear and settled mind. Breathe that in. And just let go of anything that's not serving you. As you open your eyes, we're going to settle into chair pose. So just like you're about to sit down on a chair. So this is one of our most strengthening postures that we have. All the body is working. The legs, 
the arms, the core, the shoulders, everything's working. So if it ever becomes too much, a place that you can take it is right here. Because sometimes the arms add a lot of intensity. So if you're not really wanting that, not everybody's here for intensity. Just hold it here. Good. So from here, let's see if we can inhale, reach your arms to the back, let your chest touch your legs, and then exhale it up. Good, just like we're kind of skiing, let's take a couple more, breath in, extend up, two more right here, and last one, big breath in. This time just come to your heart center, make connection on the outside, push in and twist, take a gaze up at the sky. If you'd like to open your arms and fly, Reset a little hip. Excellent work. Breathing. Take it back, center, and release it up tall. Yes, the legs are burning. I love it. We'll do it on the other side. Shake that out. Got a little cramp in my foot. Back in the center, leg rest. Not there. No, that feels good too. I haven't stretched my toes. Do you remember when we stretched our toes at the retreat? My mom was like, my foot is killing me. We stretched our toes and she was like, oh, so good. All right, breath in, relax everything down and out. And let's go ahead, this time, let's take it a little wider. We're gonna do our chair pose a little wider. So extend your arms up or heart center, settle in. Yep, it's still there. Good, listen to your body's cues. So mine's telling me the foot is like, uh-uh. So I'm gonna just back off on that side. Settle in and let's breathe. Arms to the back of the mat. Breath in, touch your chest to the legs. Exhale up. Again, reach it back, activate the triceps. And last one, best one, stretch it back. Come to the heart center. And let's twist it out other direction. Push your palm into the other one and really try to stack your shoulders. Then from there, open the arms. Good. Breath in and out. Sink those hips low. And we'll release it to the front and stand tall. Shake it out. Good. It's okay. Hey, when you're in nature, you just gotta do what you gotta do. I remember last year, or two years ago, when Bob was here, they loved Bob, and you'd hear, <laughs> it was like its own little song, it had a beat. <laughs> we all got used to it, it's not a big deal. All right, how y'all feeling? Good, we're gonna move through a little warrior, just quick. This is a fun one I like to do to help us remember the warrior postures, and then I'm handing it over. So let's find warrior one first. So one foot to the front, the other one back to the diagonal. So this is warrior one. Let's twist to the front. And then it's fun. Let's hold this for just a few breaths. Then we'll find warrior two. Just open in, widen your stance. Stretch your fingertips out. Check in with that knee. It wants to go in. Push it back. Good. So we did one, two. Now warrior three. We've got to work for it a little bit. So your arms are going to come forward. Maybe half your stance and then start to shift forward. So straight line of energy from your heel to your head. Beautiful, hold and breathe. Breath in and out. So the modification for this posture is toe down. Excellent work. So from here, find your warrior two briefly, but reverse it. So we're just reaching up to the sky. The back hand is kind of touching the inside of your leg. Good, big side stretch. So that is our reverse. Let's move back through it, finding our warrior three again. Arms forward so you can stay connected with the toe or lift off. Find your focal point, breathe deep. Spread those toes out wide. 
Excellent work. Now warrior two. So we did one, two, three. We did reverse three, two, one. And let's twist it to the front. Good, sink in, settle to the front, and let's step it in and take a big breath in and out. Good, other side. Who's sweating? It's humid. Good, this sweat is so good. Detoxing us, let it happen. Are you sweating? Oh, that's awesome. If she's sweating, then I know everybody else is. She's the non-sweater. I think I got all the sweat. <laughs> she gave it to me. <laughs> all right, guys, shoulders back and down. Let's try to find our warrior one on the other side. So you've got a stronger side and a weaker side. Let's see how we do on this one. Twist to the front. Where the shoulders go, the hips usually follow. So at first, when you're new to yoga, it, this is natural. A little bit of diagonal but as you get mobility and flexibility and strength you're able to turn to the front now settle the arms down good now relax into your warrior two wide stance so see if you can get a little more distance great job I love to see y'all challenge yourself and then the next check-in point is see if you can suck your belly in because a lot of times, even me, I'm guilty, especially when I'm watching the camera. I'm loose and, and I have my belly out. Try to push it back in its place. Beautiful. Shift those arms to the front, half your stance. Make your connection here for warrior three or begin to hinge forward, lift off. Breath in and out. Relax into the posture. Settle in and breathe. Awesome job. And we'll come into warrior two briefly and then reverse. Back arm touches the inner thigh, top arm reaches up to the sky. Good job, stretch through the ribs. So you're low in the bottom half and then you're growing tall through the top, reaching up. Good. Back into your warrior three, make your arms first. Have your connection and then a slight bend in the front knee. Pinch forward, lift off. So your arms can come to the back. You can play with this. They can come heart center. Breath in and out. And we'll re uh, step into our warrior two, sorry. So from three to two. And we've got one more. Turn those arms to the front. Maybe shorten the stance, settle in. Breath in, settle. Exhale out. One more big breath in and out. And let's just step it forward. Woo Good job. Feel free to towel off if you need to. I'm going to pass it to Alyssa. She's going to work on standing balance work. And we did just a lot of standing balance, but this is always the time we get to play and have fun. All of it's play and fun, but... Whew. All right, girly, whenever you're ready. Okay, half it over when we're done. Already, just start shaking your legs. Yeah, shake it out. <laughs> shake it out. Okay. Alright, everybody get in the center of it. We're gonna do tree. Everybody up, up, shoulders up, back and down. Put your pelvis in, just a little tiny bit, cow chest. Close your eyes down, everybody in the group. Take a deep breath in. And exhale it out. Open your eyes. You can stand your right foot. I'm just going to do my right foot. So, whichever you want to do, kick stand it. Heel to your shin. And this is very modification. So, if you want to stay here and this works for you, have it at that. You want to go up, go up a little bit more. Just try not to press on your knee. That's not good for your knee. This is great. And usually this is injury. You can just do whatever arms work for you. Because for some it's prayer, some it's up here. And just try to find something heel in front of you, not a moving knee. And just stay. Right, let's bring that down. Let's 
the other side. Shake your leg out. Shake your left leg or opposite leg. Stand it, get your balance. Find something to focus on that's not moving. And take your leg where you want to take it. And assist it if you need to. And it up. And one leg might be easier than the other. That was great. Okay. Awesome job. You want me to take it down? Yeah. Take it down. All right. Inhale up. Forward hold. Push the 
bottom to the back. Good job, guys. Our favorite part of the day, right? We made it to the mat. <laughs> oh, so good. Lots of work and, and sweat today, so we're gonna take our time and enjoy these postures on our mat. Maybe just come up into um, sphinx pose with our arms. Our forearms are just on the mat. Make your knees connect. So they're squeezing in, and then the tops of your feet are planted into the earth, and it's forcing you to lift up. Perfect. So this is the first leg like, of a gentle back bend. You've had any low back injuries, this is probably as far as you want to take it in your yoga practice. You might not even want to look up. For the rest of you, you might be able to take your gaze up or even lift the elbows off the mat if you want. Your job here. So we're just gonna release down, and then we're gonna take one leg, let me put my left leg just so we're on the same side, back and around behind us, just straight leg here. And just allow a stretch here. We're not gonna do anything with our arms yet, I just want you to relax into this posture. Can you feel a little bit of decompression here? I'm hoping you do. Try it bent knee, but then try it straight leg too. So it's just like little scissors. Now just take that back leg around it behind you. Good. From here, we're gonna just lift our leg up to the sky, grab on, and even if you just have to hold your shorts or your pants, right here is just fine. We're gonna encourage that leg a little higher. If you can lock onto the toe and pull, go for it. And some of you may even be able to grab your leg with the bottom hand. So if you can do that, you can try that as well. So we're gonna come into a little half happy baby. Use your elbow to like open the hip. Good job, now we're gonna come over, use this knee, stay here. We're coming into half frog. So just take this leg all the way, make connection to the ground, and we're gonna force our body to the front. Now I want you, the hip that's up, I want you to press that hip into the ground. You've gotta roll it in, perfect. Y'all feel that activation when you actually press, then you get that deeper stretch. If it's not enough, you can do both legs in frog, but I feel like if you can activate it, you'll get it good enough right here. The other option is to twist away. Grab where you can. If you 
can hook onto the toe. Pull the leg closer up towards the head. Now come into that little half happy baby. Use your elbow on the inside of the knee. And if it feels better, you might get a better grip on the heel. So you can hold heel or toe or calf. So we're just encouraging that knee towards the underarm. Beautiful. Slowly use your core straight. And we're going to let this leg drop down to the ground into our frog pose. So twist your body where it's on the floor. So if you want to like pull your knee up just a little bit, it'll give you a deeper stretch. And then if you want a little more, you can twist away from the leg or even fully put the arm underneath you, palm up. Now activate the hip, really push it into the ground. It's a working stretch. Oh, the other way. <laughs> There you go, got it now. I know, some of us chest is in the way a little bit. <laughs> some more than others, you're blessed. Good job, y'all, work through it, and then when you're ready, let's fully come out of that. Nice and slow, we're gonna just rest on our back. That feel good. Just open the hip up, move. A little bit different, feels really good. So now that we got the inside of the hip pretty good, we're gonna work the outside. So just take a little crisscross position with your legs. Just adjust however you need to. If you need to create some space and then wrap, that's totally fine. Now what I want you to do first is reach behind your knees and just start to pull your legs close to your chest. Now, once you've got them close to your chest, reach down and see if you can pull your legs away from each other. Now, while you're pulling them away, pull them close up to the chest too. That is so good. Somebody else is feeling the way I do. <laughs> yes. Enjoy the, the stretch. Really breathe through it. So on every exhale, see if you can just get a little bit. A little bit more, a little bit more. So to release this out, let's come into a little low plow or a little shoulder stand. Whatever you'd like to do just to kind of shake that out a little bit. Maybe point and flex. And we're going to try that on the other side. So go ahead, maybe take a little adjustment, open the legs a little bit, or open the hips, reset, and then cross over. Grab behind the knees, pull the legs into the chest. So allow that hip to adjust first. And then once you've settled in about eight to 10 seconds, we're gonna deepen. So you can grab onto your clothes, your ankles, your toes, try to peel the legs apart. And then as you pull them apart, get them closer up towards your heart. Now on the exhale, see if you can relax into this stretch. Try to let your arm muscles go. Good. We're gonna release that out, legs up the wall. Just hold here. Let's open our arms into a T posture. Palms are up, toes are active.
and we're gonna drop our my right, maybe your left, down to the ground. And then we're gonna just pull that leg over and across. Let it come close to the ground. If it doesn't touch, it's totally fine. What I do want you to try really hard for is to get both shoulders on the mat. Enjoy the beautiful gaze up to our clear blue sky. Breathe here. We're settling into the last few minutes of class. Allow your body peace and rest and relaxation. Now take your gaze away from the legs. Choose to bend the top leg if you want. Let's slowly come unwound back to the center with our knees into our chest. Take a few gentle rocks from side to side. No rushing, nice and slow with the movement. And then we're just gonna extend the opposite side up to the air and then let the other leg drop down to the bottom of the mat. Maybe point and flex, roll the ankle a few ways. Open your arms back out into that T posture and we'll slowly let the leg come across and down let it touch the ground if it can. If not, just let it hang there. Both shoulders on the mat and gaze away from the legs. Bend the top leg if you'd like to. Couple more deep breaths here. And at this time, we're just gonna find our way all the way, laying down on our back in corpse pose. I'm actually gonna turn the radio off. I think we're fighting the sounds of the bugs anyways. We're gonna let them win. Nature wins tonight. So if you have essential oils, you can grab those um, and place them on your wrist before you relax fully. I do want us to try to take about two to three minutes in complete silence. It does help if you try to cover your eyes and even your little ear openings with a towel or a t-shirt or a jacket. Sometimes the little buggies like to come buzz in your ears. So if you can cover those up, go for it. And I will bring you guys back in just a few minutes. Let me walk you through settling your body into your mat, into your little sacred space here. Just allow your ankles to be about hip distance apart and let them just drop out and be heavy. Relax your toes. Allow the calves to rest into the earth. And your knees and your hips are super light. Your low back is supported. Your shoulders are away from each other and down. And your neck is away from your body. Lift up and lower down. Your palms are face up right beside you. And let's take this opportunity to just let everything go physically, emotionally, release.
to like move your fingers and your wrists, your ankles, just bringing awareness back into the physical body, but just stay here laying. I want us to just become super present in this moment. Notice the sound. Notice the breeze on your skin. And then you can just begin to slowly open your eyes. And we'll just roll over onto one side into fetal position. One little relaxing posture left before we sit up. Taking this moment to just fill up with gratitude. Notice how you feel. Hopefully the class has helped you to settle, find peace. And we'll go ahead and just push ourselves up into a seated posture. No rush whatsoever. <laughs> I'm going to sit here and staff toes of my legs out in front of me, but you can come into easy seated, whichever feels really good for you. I have some fun little um, quotes to share with y'all from um, just today's practice, all about clearing our mind, clearing our heart. So it says, clear your heart, mind, and soul. The mind is like water. When it is turbulent, it's difficult to see. When it is calm, everything becomes clear. This is my favorite one, and y'all will definitely agree because you're here. <laughs> Sometimes all I need is just some beautiful place to clear my mind. Take a deep breath and let it go. It is what it is. Leave it behind you. And this is my favorite one. I'll end with it. This. Calmness is a human superpower. The ability to not overreact or take things personally keeps your mind clear and your heart at peace. So let's just take our hands up to our chest and then we'll take it up to the third eye, the eye of wisdom, and let's all bow to one another and say Namaste. Awesome job tonight, guys. The little buggies were like, whoa. <laughs> I feel yes, you probably did, girly. Oh my goodness. Thank y'all so much for being here. It's like this because the rain, I think, is all around us. It is so bad. It's not usually this bad, but and Eric even came and sprayed. So thanks for bearing with me. Hopefully y'all didn't get any bites. I had them all around me, but I didn't get bit. Oh, man, that was the worst time, too.